Well, welcome everybody to a special edition of Iowa post game with yours truly and a good friend of mine, Kyle Spence of Coralville. How you doing, Kyle? I'm good. It's a interesting start to the game, but very chill after that. I'm glad that we didn't make it more interesting than it needed to be. Full disclosure: I don't normally uh, start six minutes into the 
introductory music, if you will. But I just had a total equipment failure right as I was about to start. I've never had that happen before. So, Kyle, you're on deck if something crazy happens here. <laughs> I'll take deck. over the ship. <laughs> so, anyways, we're here talking about Iowa's 91-65 win over Holy Cross. Now, let me address something before we continue. we got about 200 people here on the show, and we appreciate y'all for being here. I know a lot of people were expecting Kashin Alexander. And as you can see on my right, that is not Kashin Alexander. Um, Kashin had an emergency come up. All right. I think she's comfortable with me telling everybody that. So, um, we hope to get Kashin on Monday and she was very apologetic to Hawkeye nation. She wanted to be here talking about this first round win, but let's just be glad that, uh, we don't have any drama to talk about Iowa winning by 26, pretty comfortable fashion in that second half. And we're going to recap this thing for you over the next hour or so. If you want to call in, ask a question, or make a comment about the win, you can do so by means of StreamYard. The link is in the description, I believe. Let me, I'll confirm that for everybody. Uh, but link should be in the description. And also, you can throw it. Uh, you, I'll throw it up in the live chat for anybody. If you're not familiar with StreamYard, very simple to join. Um, no, it is not in the, the description. So no wonder why we don't have anybody else on here yet, Kyle. So <laughs> <laughs> we're having all kinds of malfunctions. Anyways. Uh, it's up in the description now if you want to refresh the stream, or I'll just throw it up in the live chat. And uh, if anybody wants to call in by phone, the number is 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601 as we, cra- re- as we recap Iowa's 9185. Thir- you want to just start? You want to just take over? <laughs> 9185, man, that was a close game. <laughs> oh, Ninety-one sixty-five. Uh, it says it's having trouble with my connections. I don't know what's going on. We're here. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. <laughs> um, uh, let's just start from the top, Kyle. Uh, opening quarter, I-, I was really impressed by Holy Cross. And all joking aside, I mean, I-, I was really impressed with the effort they came out with, the tenacity, the focus, in spite of what's the best environment right now in the sport. And I thought the defense that... Uh, was thrown at Caitlin Clark was some of the best defense I've seen any team throw at her all year. That includes all of Big Ten play. That includes Nebraska. That includes Ohio State in the first half. Um, specifically, the on-ball defense, the taking away the the step back three that she's so uh, hard to stop at, if you will. Uh, I just thought they were really sound and came ready to play. I do think they got gassed in that second half. I think you can only play so much of that uh, lockdown uh, individual defense and help defense for that matter, especially with snipers on each corner knocking down threes to where eventually you're going to get gassed. And that's exactly what I thought happened in the second half. And then Caitlin Clark got hers. Um, But overall, I mean, I think this is a good test, a good early test because they're going to be tested defensively next round. It was mentioned during the broadcast, Princeton, West Virginia, both, um, rest their tip their caps toward their defense if you will and so uh just your thoughts on that first half i thought caitlin clark struggled but worked through those struggles and credit to holy cross yeah it was kind of continued a little bit of a theme for caitlin of slow starts but she did pick it up eventually i would say i was more so impressed by holy cross than i was disappointed in iowa um i think the physicality they came out with was great i think your your point's a sound one though they you can't the way that they played that first quarter, they were never going to be able to do that for 40 minutes. And um, unless you have, you know, 10, 9, 10, 12 fresh bodies to throw in there that you trust to play good defense, you can't you can't play individual defense and be making all the rotations that they were on on help defense without without players getting gassed or losing their legs on offense and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it was certainly a slow start, but the second quarter was important for me, I think, to watch. Uh, how Iowa bounced back. I mean, they first quarter was, was what the two point deficit at the end of the first quarter. And then they won the second quarter, 25 to nine. So that was a great response to a, to a hot start by Holy Cross and a physical start by Holy Cross. So I'm not super uh, concerned by the start. Uh, They will be tested in the future um, in a similar fashion. Um, But it's, it's definitely good for them to get, um, to get hit in the mouth, so to speak, at the start of a game um, and feel what that's like, because 
you know, you, you, you come out and you, you play like that against uh, a Colorado or a Kansas state here in the sweet 16, or maybe even against Princeton or West Virginia, maybe you're down five or 10 after the first quarter. And then maybe it's not so, so uh, maybe it's an uphill battle from there, but um, yeah, good, good test respect to Holy cross for the, for the competition that they gave even battled on the boards early. I know they got hammered on the boards late, but um, they, uh, they had 14 offensive rebounds, which shows they were, they were crashing the glass. Mm -hmm. Um, Just didn't, they just didn't shoot the ball well enough down the stretch there to, to make a game of it. You see some stats there in the bottom uh, ticker. We're waiting for official stats from the NCAA official box score from today's win. Caitlin Clark ended up with uh, two rebounds shy of a triple double with 27 points. Um, and then Kate Martin with 14 rebounds along with her 15 points. Addison O'Grady had 14 and five. Gabby Marshall was uh, effective, especially early. I thought her threes early were huge because you talk about that defense early. Honestly, Kyle, I'm, I know you said you're not real concerned. I'm probably even less concerned than you are simply because I didn't think Iowa played poorly in the first half. I thought uh, everybody else around Caitlin Clark played really well, especially on the offensive Agreed. end. They yeah. did what they needed to do, making shots, making threes. I think they started the, the game six of 11 from deep. And yeah. that's been, to me, that's the game plan. If you're playing Iowa, if you're a Holy Cross and you have a limited scout time or prep time, I am going to slam my best individual defender on Caitlin. I'm going to make the scouting report very clear about that step back three. And then I'm going to make her drive right. Okay. I'm going to make her drive right to her strong hand. And then I'm going to send help over and make her kick and make someone else burn me. And what happened in that first quarter, even though Holy Cross, I mean, give credit to them offensively. They fought in that first. They played really well in that first quarter in that environment to even have a lead. But uh, Iowa knocked down those threes. And in spite of them knocking down those threes, Holy Cross is still in the game. Just goes to show how good that team played in that first quarter. But frankly, I, I don't know. And I know Princeton and West Virginia pride themselves on defense. I, I don't know what, what you said earlier about, you know, if Iowa plays this way against a better team, they could be down more, could be in trouble. That's possible. But again, I don't know that you're going to get much of a better effort from an individual defense perspective on Caitlin Clark, as we saw from Holy Cross tonight. I know it's easy to kind of look at the, the 16 seed number and say, well, you know, they struggled in the first half. I just think Holy Cross played really, 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 really well. Yeah. And um, it, again, good test for Iowa. I think good test for LSU yesterday. We can talk about the, the grand scheme of things in this tournament. I think when you get tested early, especially in the first round, when maybe when you're not expecting it, it wakes you up, especially with a two-week layoff coming off a two-week layover. Yeah, yeah, and and combine that with um, the inefficient shooting from Caitlin, and obviously getting nothing from Hannah Stolke tonight too. We can't forget that. That was, I think, that was my biggest uh, positive note from the game. I thought the backup bigs, AJ Ediger, Addison O'Grady, and even Sharon Goodman when she came in at the end, I thought all three of those gals played really, really well um, and held their own nicely. And I know again, it's a 16 seed, but you know, I thought they rebounded well. They were in good positions off the glass. Uh, AJ Ediger and Addison O'Grady were a combined 11 for, or nine for 11, spelling for Hannah Stolke, which allowed her. I think ESPN said she was just sick. There was no big issue, but she was under the weather a little bit. So hopefully she's, uh, hopefully she's healthy for Monday because they will need her, um, especially, uh, especially in terms of the transition game. I think that's her biggest, uh, or transition or semi transition. Um, where they where they want to get out and run, but really, really good job by by AJ Ediger and Addison O'Grady spelling for for Hannah tonight. Yeah, uh, it was reported late in the process. I believe it was Kyle Huseman confirmed that report. Kyle Huseman of HawkeyeReport.com reporting that uh, Kristen, in response to your question, Hannah Stolke was dealing with uh, whether it be an illness or just not feeling well. Uh, they didn't need her in that second half, and credit to Addison O'Grady for playing well. They're going to need her especially when they go up against better size in this con in this uh, tournament moving forward. So excellent opportunity for her to get some extended run. And I didn't think she looked very good. I thought Hannah looked I – I thought she looked under the weather in that first slugger, quarter so. in the game. Yeah, so, she, didn't, she didn't look like your normal energetic self. And and for that matter, good to see A.J. Ediger get in the game as well and give them some solid minutes. Um, yeah. For the game, A.J. had, I believe, three rebounds. Again, I'm waiting for the official box score from – 
from Iowa, but I can tell you AJ Ediger for the game. She had that she was two from two for two from the field, along with three rebounds, those four points in 12 minutes for really the, the third five off the bench. If we're going to qualify or quantify uh, Hannah Stolke as a five. So uh, that's where we're at. Again, uh, we're waiting for uh, an official box score from the NCAA. But uh, in the meantime, we're here to take your questions. We want to thank Iowa Smokehouse for making our call line possible as well. And if you haven't already, be sure to get your orders into iowasmokehouse.com. They're supporting this channel and really through the pipeline, Iowa women's basketball and coverage of Iowa women's basketball coverage or post-game coverage, I should say. Check it all out, iowasmokehouse.com. Tasting is believing. Use the code Hawkeyes for 15% off your order on meat sticks, jerky, steak bites, and everything else. It's great. It's great tasting, great quality. iowasmokehouse.com. Use the code Hawkeyes, and we will be checking in on our Iowa Smokehouse bracket challenge here in a little bit as well. Yes. Can I can, can I give a shout out? Absolutely. <laughs> I think there's from time to time when we have our, our, our expert coaches on the panel uh, doing post game shows, there's times that they get criticism. But today I would like to put the spotlight on Kashina Alexander. I don't know. You've probably already seen this, but she is currently 23 of 23 in the women's bracket challenge. So anybody that has things to say in the comments that says, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about or she's wrong about this and wrong about that. She's 23 of 23 in her bracket. So I will I will take our expert over, she over is. just about anybody. How many, do you know how many perfect, bra- I mean, I'm sure there's quite a few. Here's the one thing, it, as impressive as that is, and it's really impressive, and I told her that yesterday. Um, there have only been like, what, one or two real upsets. Middle Tennessee won, that was an upset. It's been, as the ESPN broadcast brought out, mostly chalk on the women's side through about a day and a half. However, however, I'd like to know how many perfect brackets there are left on ESPN because as part of our group, she's not only number one in our group, she's number one in the country, tied with, I'm sure, a lot of other brackets. But I'm curious to know out of the millions that entered, how many perfect brackets remain. Do you have any idea, Kyle? Um, uh, I'm trying to find it right, All right now. Well, while we're getting to that, we're, we, we want to extend our thanks to Iowa Smokehouse for making that challenge possible. Top three winners on both the men's side and the women's side get special prize package from Iowa Smokehouse. Let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse caller. It's James who's on hold. James, welcome. Uh, who is your RTS Reds player of the game? Did you come out with that yet? We have not gotten there yet. You want to guess? It? I, to, to me personally, and I get Kaylin had a double double. It's either Kate Martin or AJ Addison O'Grady. The only reason I go O'Grady is because Kate's done it before. Maybe not. O'Grady hasn't done it before. Where it was like, yeah, I mean, she what had 14 and 5. I get that's not a great stat line, but like for her having to play the minute she did. That's a good stat line for her, if that makes sense. Maybe for other bigs in the country, it's not a great stat line, right? But for her, it is. But obviously, it's tough to turn down the double-double for Kate Martin as well. So I feel like it's either way. I just was wondering what your thoughts on that were. But Yeah, I've got Kate Martin. we got Kate Martin yeah. for our RTA Threads player of the game. 15 and 14 is impressive. And honestly, James, early in the game, I was thinking this is going to be a Gabby Marshall player of the game award because Gabby especially was effective in that first quarter when – Caitlin Clark was struggling when she was being locked down by that Holy Cross defense. So I was prepared to give it to Gabby. And frankly, when Gabby's giving you 11 points on three of seven shooting, you'll take it. So yeah, for sure. terrific game for Gabby Marshall. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Kate Martin was really good. You know, Sydney Falter a little bit modest, but still gives you nine and seven and efficient three of six from the field. And you mentioned it, Addison O'Grady, really good too. And, and that's fair. I mean, Addison could have easily been the runner up for our player of the game because she's coming in situation where she's kind of being asked to play more minutes than she normally would because of the situation with Hannah Stolke and she stepped up nicely. Yeah, for sure. And it was a good recovery. I think one thing that you guys didn't really hint on either is they haven't played in like two weeks and that could also kind of affect your slow, how slow you start just because you really haven't, like you've been practicing obviously, but practice is way different than playing. It's like you haven't got your feet back on you in two weeks and a little bit at the times I can kind of come out slow. And I know Caitlin's came out slow the last couple of games. So for that, maybe it's a little bit, Worrying where it's like, okay, yeah, you had two weeks off of just work, kind of came out slow in the Big Ten tournament too. So I don't know with her as much, but maybe some other people, it's like they haven't played. So they kind of try and get their feedback on them. But absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and I do, I think that Holy Cross, especially given the fact that it's not like they're, they're one of the few teams, well, one of just what, four teams that actually had to play in the first, the first four. Games. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have a situation where they have less prep time 
than most low seeds. So the fact that they were able to come out here and, and somewhat match what Caitlin Clark is going to give you offensively um, on the defensive end in that first quarter was was really impressive. Yeah, for sure. But like you said, if we can get people contribute, just keep getting contributions from everybody else, you don't have to rely as much on Caitlin like you did didn't really today because you didn't really need her to be superhero Caitlin, you know, because we have people that are that were playing well, so we don't really need that superhero numbers from her. But it was good to see Gabby get going. Obviously, she struggled a little bit late. Obviously, she had, what, what the first two threes, I think, and then after that, she kind of tailed off a little bit. But Well, and, and again, as the game wore on, Caitlin started to get hers, and um, I thought Sydney played better as the game went on, as did Addison O'Grady with, with more playing time. And we did just get the official – just got the official box score from the NCAA. I was really impressed with Simone Foreman, too. I mean, let's give her – her do. She guarded, she had the task of guarding Caitlin Clark much of the night. And again, they switched off at times, but I, I, again, I just don't know that I've seen somebody play Caitlin Clark as well individually as Simone Foreman played against her in that first half. And Simone struggled from the field, 0 for 5 from 3, 2 of 8 from the field overall, just five points. So to be able to lock in defensively when your offensive game's not clicking, um, really impressive. The bottom line is you can't shoot, you can't shoot 8% from the field in the second half. Am I am I right in saying that eight percent is that a typo? <laughs> That's got to be a typo. That has to be. There's no way they shot. 8%. Okay, so the NCAA box score. Uh, okay, no, I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking at. No, they shot. They shot one. They shot eight percent in the second quarter. Excuse me. Eight for. Okay, that makes more sense. In the second quarter, they made one field goal in that second quarter. Holy Cross did so. Iowa give credit to the Iowa defense I, again. Uh, Caitlin struggling in the first quarter. Holy Cross gets a lead, and Iowa locks them down in the second, gave up eight points for the second quarter. Yeah, for sure. And and it was – I always never worried about even them leading at one point. I was like, just get your feet under, you're fine. Sometimes, you know, especially when you haven't played in so long, it's kind of a little bit of a – of a just like a – we got to get back used to it kind of running. I mean, but one thing I thought was cool is the fact that I didn't know the girl on uh, Holy Cross was Brian Allen's sister. I think that was a little bit cool of a story, too. That was kind of a neat tie to the whole Iowa – Holy Cross game too, but yeah, it was good to see him supporting his sister. I'm glad yeah. that there was no. Yeah, I hope nobody was like. I hope nobody was like mad at him. Like, oh, like, obviously he's supporting family. You got to you support your family. That's most important and everything. Like, I hope nobody was like, why is he not supporting Iowa? Like, that's his family. You got to. Yeah, do he came straight do. from Iowa football practice was the report. Yeah. So. But it, it's going to be fun to see who we play, and obviously, like they said, it's both the defensive matchups. So. We have to focus more keen on our offense, try to make sure our offense is where it needs to be up to par, obviously, especially Princeton, because they can – and not saying West Virginia can't, but Princeton can score and play defense. You know, they have kind of both sides. West Virginia is not as good in the scoring side as they are on the defense, if that makes it – Princeton can kind of do both. So you kind of got to get ready for that. But it has been interesting to see, and hopefully we can keep going. And obviously, if there's one upset already in our region with Middle Tennessee beating Louisville, so. Yeah. Uh, by the way uh, – Kashin picked that game correctly. She also picked Florida Gulf Coast, um, who currently lead with five minutes to go. If they pull that off, which is still it's still up, up in the air, but if they pull that off, then Kashin will be one of a thousand perfect brackets left out of three oh, million. So I love Kashin, but I hope she's wrong on that one just because the girl from uh, Oklahoma went to my high school. So I'm hoping she's wrong about that. I'll support that girl in my way. So wait a minute, Kashin would be one of a thousand? One of a thousand of, of the three point Three million brackets that were. How do you know that? Because I'm on the perfect bracket tracker. Oh, there's a perfect bracket tracker on ESPN. Yeah. So if you go the to men, the there's no perfect oh, brackets left in the men. They said. So cur currently, before that game goes final, there's 4,993. But of the 4,993, only 1,203 of those have picked Florida Gulf Coast. So it shows you for each individual game based on what result. <laughs> So. Oh my goodness. That's pretty sad. Something uh, uh, that is, I've, I've got 30, 34 of those brackets that are currently perfect of the 34, of the 5,000 have picked Texas A and MCC to beat USC. <laughs> and she <picked> that? No. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. The 16 seed over the one seed. So but no, it was, to be it was fun. It was a good game on, obviously they do what they needed to do. They got to rest them in a way. Yes, they play, but they also play in two more days. So it's good to kind of get some them rest kind of in the fourth quarter, you know, because you got your feedback on you, but you don't have to worry about trying to overexert yourself, working too hard when you got to play 
two more days. I think that was beneficial. And with Hannah not feeling well, hopefully she's feeling better. But I guess we said Addison stepped in well. And even AJ in her time, and her, she didn't have that many minutes. AJ didn't, but I felt like she played well in her minutes too. And she gave you that little bit of that intensity you needed on that side too. So I always think it's weird how it went from Shannon or from Shannon Goodman being a starter to now it's Addie, Addie and uh, AJ. But this is how life works sometimes, you know, and just kind of goes that way. But absolutely sir oh you get the other callers and go hawks tomorrow hopefully we can get the win in the it i know my people here probably don't care about that but i care about it i care about it <laughs> i say a lot of people in the chat probably don't but all right enjoy your night and get to the next callers and uh, thank you sir appreciate james calling into our iowa smokehouse call online and i see a lot of comments in the chat first of all hello to ann out in brooklyn thank you and your husband for being here ann and Gary commenting on Caitlin Clark's dad, Bobby saying the same thing. So there was an emotional moment caught on camera with Caitlin Clark's father, where it appears that he mouthed stop to Caitlin Clark when she was getting on the officials at one point in that first half. It's interesting. At one point in the game, you texted me and said, Caitlin is flirting with a technical. And my response to you, Kyle, was Caitlin's always flirting with a technical. She is. And this is where I'm trying to be super objective. I'm not trying to upset a bunch of Hawkeye fans because I am an Iowa fan at heart. That's what I am. Ready? Can we say that again? I am an Iowa fan. All right. But as it relates to objectivity, I've, that's what I pride myself on with this show. Caitlin gets away with more mouthing, more antics than anybody else in the sport. And that's not debatable. Okay. It's not debatable. I mean, you, you can ask anybody. I know maybe Iowa fans in general don't want to admit that, but anybody on the outside, many people have commented on it, not just the haters. I know that those are the easy, it's an easy term for those that make the comments, but she gets away with a lot. You don't often see a player hit the ball across her head into the first row or whatever that was and not get anything. She is riding the officials, riding the officials. And if I was an official, I could tell you this right now, I would tee her up hard and I tear up early. All right. <laughs> I'm, I would. And, and it would set the precedent for the rest of the game. Now I have no doubt that part of the reason, a big part of the reason why she does not get technical fouls is because she's Caitlin Clark. So whether you like that or not, whether you want to admit it or not, it's either something she's earned or something that's unfair, but it is what it is. Yes, and I, I think the other thing to add on to that is with the women's game, and we saw it last year in the championship game when Caitlin did get teed up, was it counts as a personal foul in the women's game. I think a lot of people don't realize that. So the technical foul, as big of a deal as it is like in the NBA, in the NBA it does not count as a personal foul. So you still have to get another technical to get thrown out. Like when she had butted the ball, she had two or three personals at that point. So, and I granted it's a, it's a blowout, but like in a close game, if she has three fouls and she gets teed up, that's a huge deal. Like that's a massive deal. So I think it's uh, something that makes them think a little bit harder, but I, I agree. She, she does, she understands her position in the sport of college basketball. And she definitely, you know, she, she definitely plays to it a little bit. And that I, I would have, uh, I would have, I would have, I would have teed her up for that. <laughs> I would have teed her up for that. <laughs> just, like it's just the reality of the situation. Like if it was on, if the if the foot was on, if the shoe was on the other foot, we would want the other opposing and player. To what what I would do, by the way, is I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a point of teeing her up early. What I would do is I would talk to her before the game. That's what I would do as these as an official. Like I would talk to her and say, "Hey, look, I understand you've gotten away with things here and there, but what what's that?" I was like, "I talked to her." Like what, what I got to her. The rules are the rules. Like either. Well, like, I, I understand that, but like you, you've heard a lot of these stories in like the, the last dance or like with the Shaq Kobe Lakers, like they used to come to Shaq before the games or Shaq would go to them and say, Hey, how are you going to call it tonight? Like they, th these conversations do sure. happen. So I think if, if we can have a scenario where we get rid of some of the attitude and we also don't get the technical, I think that's the best case scenario for the game. I understand that you, you say it's the best case scenario for the game from a competitor's standpoint, from a viewership standpoint, a non-Iowa viewership standpoint. I would want her to be teed up. Now, there are some, I'm sure there's some fans, even non-Iowa fans that would say, 
I don't want to see her get teed up because I love the passion and I don't want to see reason for her not to not be on the floor. So I'm not saying everybody's going to unite around my take on this, but yeah, I just think in general, she gets away with a lot. And I, a lot of Iowa fans would just attribute that to being passionate. I think she would attribute that to being passionate, but I think what the cameras caught from her dad, if he indeed was mouthing back to her to stop is an indication that you don't have to always be on her side. There are times where you can be critical just because she's the greatest player to ever come through the program. And maybe through Iowa basketball as a whole does not mean you can, you're, you're a traitor to the state to be critical of Caitlin Clark. And she struggled from the field. And again, I give credit to Holy Cross for making her struggle from the field. But there's gonna be, there could be games down the stretch. I don't think I, I said earlier. I don't think from an individual standpoint, there's gonna be many teams that can do what they did to her tonight, or that will do what they did to her tonight. But there will be some athletic guards. Maybe it's on an LSU. Maybe it's a Flage Johnson, or maybe it's somebody for maybe it's Jalen Sherrod over at Colorado. There's some good guards down the pipeline that are going to get physical with her. And what I hope doesn't happen, what I hope doesn't happen, Kyle, is I hope they don't start calling technicals later in the tournament. Exactly. So in other words, you you let her mouth off and get away with it when she shouldn't in a game like this. Maybe she mouths off in the second round game. And then once you get to the Sweet 16, they start teeing her up. That would be a problem. See, that I have an issue with. Either do it now or don't do it at all. Should have been done before. Because I don't, I'm not a big fan of, well, look who this person is. It's Kobe or it's Michael or it's you know, Luca, and we're not going to tee them up because they're Kobe, Michael, and Luca. No, I don't, I don't like that. All right. I just don't like that. I get that's how it is sometimes, but at some point there's got to be somewhat. I like, I like a little extra rope for them. I don't like completely changing the game or the rules for that. Well, like I think if they, get a, if they get an extra 10 seconds to, you know, here and there to, she's not getting called for anything from, from no, a it does. Yes, exactly. Yes. And, and by the way, as it relates to Luka Doncic, because everybody knows here I'm a Hawk or a Mavs fan as well, Luka gets teed up a lot. In fact, like he every does. year. I was going to say, Luka, Luka and, and Caitlin's mannerisms towards the referees are awfully similar sometimes. How well he gets teed up. <laughs> he gets teed up, and he's always close to that 16 technical suspension mark where you get suspended for a game for too many technicals. So you can be critical of Luka Doncic. What I'm saying is, the team is punished. The team suffers the consequences for that. And he is fine. He's called for technicals. That's all I'm saying. And I know it's not apples to apples in general because this is college versus professional women's versus men's. I get it. But I'm just saying that would be my one thing right now. Like we've talked about it in the past. I just hope that either there's a, a containment of her emotions down the stretch in the bigger games or B, that somehow the officials continue to swallow the whistles. I just know what happened. Remember what happened the final weekend of the tournament last year with the officiating? Yeah. That's what I don't want to have see happen. You go back and watch the national championship game. There was at least one technical called in that game that was absurd. Yeah. You know, we go from over here to over here, right? So, yeah. like, the balance goes from, like, this to this. I don't want to see that happen. So anyways, we can move on from that. But uh, if anybody wants to challenge me on that, I'm totally fine. The other thing that needs to be challenged, you want to challenge me on something, Kyle, because (laughs) you reached out to me during the game. And this was on regards to the elbow to the face of Caitlin Clark. All right. (laughs) And, And I feel very strongly about what happened there. You feel very strongly about what happened there. We come from two different places. So first of all, it went to the reviews, the scores table. Remember the it was uh, I believe it was, um, I believe it was Power Cassidy. Was it? Yeah. Am I correct in saying that it was yeah. um, Power Cassidy without the ball, making a cut to the rim, and she hits Caitlin Clark with the elbow, and they go to the, the uh, review table, and indeed they call it a flagrant one. What's crazy about this rule and what's no, crazy? They didn't call it a flagrant one. What did they call it? They call it an intentional foul. Thank they call you. it an intentional <laughs> foul. So what's crazy about the rules, all right? Or there's a couple of things that I think are crazy about the rules. And if people don't want to hear me talk about this, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about it. What's crazy about the situation <laughs> is you've got people on – I literally responded to a guy on Twitter who I don't even follow. I don't think he follows me. But I saw him on some on some reply, and I had to reply to him because his his response to that play was should have been a flagrant too. 
And I'm like, I'm sitting here like, what? What are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? What are we talking about? Should have been a flagrant two. I don't have an issue with it being called a flagrant one. I would not have had an issue with that. Although, if I was the official, not looking at the rule book word for word, right? I understand there's emphasis placed on certain things year after year, and the game has changed a bit. I'm calling that a common foul because I don't see anything on tape that tells me that there was anything malicious or intentional there. Where does, However, it, where does it need to be for a flagrant hold foul? Hold on. Hold on. Okay, but that's the stupid. First of all, we can we can debate that for hours, but the bottom line is the fact that it was called an intentional foul is the that's, dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Yeah. How can you call it an intentional foul when it was clearly not intentional? No. Look at it from the back angle. You can clearly see she's simply trying to get around on the cut, and it she, was. It, can we agree it was reckless? A little bit reckless. No, no, I can't you agree. Don't think that was reckless. No. Players do that all the time. Caitlin happened to have her face there. And the player that uh, Cassidy Powers probably extended the elbow too much. But reckless? Come on. It's like I would say it's a little bit reckless. <laughs> a little bit reckless. It's okay. a little bit reckless. And and regardless, again, it doesn't have to be intentional. I, I know the flagrant foul rule book says forcible contact to the head. It doesn't say anything about intentional. And that's why I have no issue with it being called a flagrant one. Yes, that's I'm that saying, would be my argument. I don't like, and, I, and I told you, and I'll make very clear something. I told you during the game, we were texting back and forth. I said, I think the rule is dumb because I think yeah. forcible contact should be yeah. defined to where if it's unintentional elbow to the face, you go look at it. Yes, it's absolutely a common foul, but if it's unintentional, I don't believe in calling a flagrant. I just don't. Yeah. But the game has changed as part of the rule book. What I do have a problem with is it being called an intentional foul. The link, the, the lingo of that, the language. Yeah. Behind it that, it sounded call. like it sounded like they determined a punishment that was appropriate, and then they looked for the foul that assessed that punishment, rather than looking for the foul that was committed, and then whatever punishment came from that came from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm I am fully prepared to get absolutely ripped. Usually, <laughs> oh, you're going to <laughs> get ripped in the live chat, but then I'll get ripped. A lot. People really get bold when the, the stream is posted. And they go to yeah, the see, you see if they it. say it if they say it right now we're gonna put it on the screen and read it that's put what it on the screen and, and I'll <laughs> take him to task on it but anyways that's just my two cents I love Iowa love Caitlin Clark I'm just giving my objective thoughts on that call I don't like the call um, but it was absolutely a foul but I don't think that's reckless because I really don't believe that she was trying to do anything other than clear Caitlin Clark to cut to the basket and that's part of basketball but anyways. We'll move on. Let's go to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. Before we do that, I want to thank RTI Threads. Yes, I've got the RTI Threads shirt on. Check out the Iowa baseball gear as their season is now in full swing. Big Ten play has started up. Check it all out, iowabaseballswarm.com. This uh, partnership with RTI Threads, the Swarm, and Iowa baseball, a special deal. Check out their new website, iowabaseballswarm.com, and also rtithreads.com to check out original football player apparel via RTI threads. Um, Kashin's bracket is on the line right now. We've got Florida Gulf Coast down by two with 19 seconds to go. She needs them to win. So, I believe um, I took. I believe I picked Florida Gulf Coast. I think I picked Florida I Gulf. Could, Coast. I have to check my. You'll check my bracket. Let's go to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. We got Darrell on the line. Darrell MVP. I'm sorry about your Wildcats yesterday. I had a lot of people asking me how Darrell MVP was. Doing. <laughs> Are you okay, Daryl MVP? Are you I'm okay? okay. I'm okay. Listen, listen. Oh, Kentucky doesn't have a head basketball coach. We have a development guy for the next level. So, Kyle, I will literally take you over John Calipari. I'll take anyone over John Calipari because when you, it's addition by subtraction to get rid of something that's toxic and negative to the fan base. Is he really? Is his job really on the line, Daryl? Yeah, I expect him to get fired. He needs to be fired. It, this, wow. This, it's, wow. Crazy. That's a big statement. It's, well, it's when, when you demand the absolute best, and when you're equivalent to Indiana football over the last four years, you need to be fired. Sorry. I mean, imagine if Iowa women's basketball over the next four years, okay, they were – 80 and 50, they had one win in the Big Ten tournament and one win in their March Madness. Do you think that person would be fired? 
No. I mean, you all need to raise your standards up. Okay. <laughs> well, we I, we don't I'm have a here. we don't have a national championship this century. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you right now, things are going to change as it relates to expectations once Caitlin leaves, and they are doing a nice job on the recruiting trail, but it's not going to yeah. turn into Kentucky men's basketball. No. Well, you don't want to turn into us because we lose to teams like St. Peter's and Oakland. My goodness, we can't beat anybody. Daryl, do you, I don't know if you entered our uh, – did you enter the pool? Yes, I did, and uh, both the men's and women's. Okay, well, if you go to my men's bracket, I picked Oakland to win. Does that make you angry? No, because I picked- I, the, I'm angry at myself for being stupid enough to pick Kentucky to win a single game. I had them losing to Texas Tech, and I feel like I've been conned. <laughs> I picked Oakland to win. I picked Oregon to upset South Carolina. And I picked uh, Kane to uh, upset. Uh, who did they play? Uh, BYU. BYU. And I yeah. picked James Madison to upset Wisconsin. So I think the whole all my upsets went the other way. Madison. What's that? Oh, I was going to say the whole. I think the whole country picked James Madison. <laughs> yeah. Although Wisconsin had been playing a lot better over the last couple yeah, of weeks of the season, yes. so you I thought maybe right. they'd figure it out, and especially in a game where. You know, you always think of those upset games where one team is pegged to be the darling. You'd think that the other team would re- – I mean, like, there's no way you can overlook any NCAA tournament game, but you'd think they would really be up for that game. But anyways. Florida Gulf Coast down three with 16 seconds left, and they have the ball. Uh, Oklahoma had a chance to ice the game with two free throws, but they missed the first. So. And Kyle, I want to talk about – because let's be honest, Iowa won by like a bajillion, gazillion points. So in the, I know we're talking about these minute things, but listen, everything could have won against Iowa – Caitlin Clark probably could have even been ejected from this game and they would have won the game comfortably. So the theme I've noticed from this tournament, Kyle, is teams choking unbelievable big leads. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast was up 14. They're losing right now. Louisville was up 18. They lost to Middle Tennessee State. Yeah. Maryland was up 20 yeah. and lost by big. comfortable margin. What is happening? Yeah, I mean, this is the this is what happens when the three ball starts to get more and more integrated. Is I mean, your your four possessions both ways from like a twelve over run and the entire game flipping. This is I mean, the more threes get taken in the game, the faster pace the game becomes. This is this is part of the craziness. It just makes it harder to predict anything. And you know, as far as trends are concerned, as long as we're talking about trends, Darrell, I know we're talking about women's basketball right now, but. On the men's side, I, I'd love to be able to do some. Maybe I can get Tony to do this for us because he's kind of our, our numbers guru for men's hoops. I want to look at average scoring, um, total offense, if you will, over the past five years in the NCAA tournament because it seems like there are more low scoring games year in and year out in the tournament. However, this year we have had a weird range of we've had a couple games in the hundreds already. I think we've had three games that have hit the hundreds. Um, I don't think any of which were overtime games and you have a couple games. I mean, like Virginia scoring what 41, 42 points in a game. You have <laughs> scored uh, like two, two points in 15 minutes. You've got Colorado state scoring in the forties, I yeah. think. Uh, so like just a lot of weird results from an offensive perspective. By the way, D. Rolison, uh, any idea of uh, CC's next big record to achieve? Um, no. <laughs> What's her next? Has big she record? broken the uh, NAIA all-time scoring record? There was a lady in NAIA who had the record, but it's not on the NCAA books. Has she broken that record? Uh, <laughs> I, don't I will. I, well, you know, because what, I played in the NAIA, I will Google. I was going to say, you know, who we should ask is the one person here who played. <laughs> Competed in the NAIA, and that would be Kyle Spence Golf. Yeah, the Happy Gilmore of the NAIA. From what I've, that's the new nickname he's going to have. From what you've been told. By the way, it does look like Florida Go Coast is going to fall. They just missed a three, and with 0.7 seconds remaining, so um, okay. Indiana looks to be, or excuse me, Oklahoma looks to be. A, no, it's going to be Florida Gulf Coast ball. So maybe they'll get a shot up here. 0. 0.7 well, seconds. There's an injured player, it looks like, for Oklahoma right now. So it's going to, looks like it's going to take some time to sort this all out. Yeah. She's on the sideline. Uh, I'm assuming she's cramping up because they're, they're stretching out that leg. But she looks to be in some serious pain. 0.7 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised if they look at the clock, although one official's standing there in the baseline. So maybe they're not looking at the clock. But, uh, anyways, 
Um, oh, what do you got for I the just, Iowa game? Um, Iowa basically took the game like a glorified bye, and that's what it was, is a glorified bye. Um, congrats to Holy Cross. They made it interesting for five whole minutes. That's five more minutes of interestingness than I was expecting from this game. So I'd like to give a congrats to the Crusaders for actually showing up and playing. Unlike uh, Texas A&M Corpus Crispy, which was down literally 24 to two or 24 to four at the end of the first quarter. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they, they didn't, although they, they did, uh, they did come back a little bit in the second quarter, didn't they? Yeah. They're only down 23 right now. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin is 190 points behind the all time leading NAI score. So. So she's not, she's unlikely to hit them. They're going to have to go all the way to the championship game and she's going to have to average like 36 or 37. All well, right. Let me give you, let me give, let me give you some play by play here, folks. Uh, ESPN, we've got one second left. They put 0.3 back on the clock. Florida Gulf Coast down 373 70. Florida Gulf Coast inbounding it from the baseline. It's a spot inbounds. They get it to the corner. No, it's going to be knocked out again which means they're, right now there's 0. 0.4 on the clock, so they're going to probably look at this to see if they should add time, but this game likely over, which means Kashin's perfect bracket will be done with. Lemansky, like you, MVP, but the SEC sucks. We're 4-5. <laughs> and five. Hey, we're 4-5, and five, okay? 4-5 and five ain't too bad. We had a rough patch to start, but we're going to we're gonna come on strong, okay? I mean, it's look our, at the big team. They're not doing it? fantastic. <laughs> Huh? So South South Carolina's gone, Kentucky's gone, Auburn's gone. Who what what SEC what SEC what SEC teams are left right now? Tennessee beat St. Peter's. Okay, shocking. Massive massive yeah. upset considering what St. Peter's has done in the past. Yeah. Um, who else is left in this thing? But by the way, Showtime um, says Corey, I disagree. I have played basketball a long time. What does that mean? You played college basketball, professional basketball? What? I mean, I played basketball a long time. Doesn't mean I've played at a high level. Like I'm just I played I'm basketball just, a long time, Corey. Yeah, Kyle's played basketball for a long time. Like I'm just telling you right now that my opinion is that an unintentional elbow, your elbow sticks out naturally, right? And I understand you're trying to limit contact to the head. I get that, but an unintentional elbow is not an intentional foul. That doesn't make any sense. I will say that, like, that like, I thought the elbow was a tiny bit high because I mean the girl's elbow was up at her head. Like it's not a, it's kind of a hard, it's not a supernatural position. But oh, Alabama and Texas A and M also won. Yes. Those are the two. Yep. I can't remember the final game, but those are two others. Alabama scored 109 points. Yeah, they ran Charleston out of the gym. That was yeah. tough. And Florida. Almost one that they had a more. Do we count them as a moral victory? They scored a hundred points, but still lost. That's that's hard to do. <laughs> that's, a, that's not that's like something Iowa has. Didn't Iowa do that a few years ago against at Minnesota, Kyle? They yes. scored, they scored was, that at, was that at was that at the barn or was that at home? I think it was at the barn. Yeah, I think it was at the barn too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Katie wants to know how do you think uh, Caitlin Clark's attitude today impacted other teammates? I, I don't know that it ever impacts other teammates, to yeah. be quite frank, Katie. Based on what I see, it seems like they rally around her, and that's great because they do love her passion. But I don't ever see her teammates look a certain way based upon her getting after the officials or getting upset with herself. I'm more concerned with what her actions could uh, cause as it relates to officiating down the stretch. So either tear up now and kind of put her back in her place, or you just hope that she's allowed to continue to do that because the intensity of this tournament's only going to go up, go North as we continue to progress. Yeah. I don't, I don't think uh, I, I, it's interesting because like they, their teammates all know who she is and like kind of what, what she's about. I, I don't find that it rubs off on her at all or rub, rubs okay, off. Real, on real quick, here we go. Florida Gulf coast inbounding the ball 0. 0.4 on the clock. They got to make it three. It's 73 70. They got to get it out. They get it in. They get the shot up. It is no good. Wow, I actually got a great look. Holy cow. From the <laughs> Yeah, left she was wing. wide open. Wow. And that shot almost dribbled in. Uh, so yeah, so on it. this is the uh, fourth team that has lost with a double-digit lead. Them, Louisville, Maryland, and Michigan lost. They had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter against Kansas. The three games I've gotten wrong involved the three of those four teams. 
So I'm finally glad I caught a break here with Oklahoma. It's been brutal seeing my bracket just getting one wrong because I'm not sure how you feel, Kyle, when making a bracket, but I feel like if I just get a game completely wrong, like a lot of people were on New Mexico over Clemson, I can accept that a lot easier than being up like 20 points and then losing. Yeah, that's I I take some moral victories on the bracket. The teams don't take moral victories, but I'll take them. And also, I feel, <laughs> I feel like the more numbers I look at, the more I think I know, the less I get right. <laughs> like the more I look, the more I looked at the resumes, the more I just confuse myself. By the way, D. Rollison says, Corey, you're a much better reporter than referee. And Rural Hayden says, cry more, Corey. <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll go cry more. As soon as this show is over, I'll go cry more. Maybe you and Sharon Moore can have like a group therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Is he available? He's too he's too busy firing coaches that he just hired last week because they're driving drunk. Anyways, anything else, real? <laughs> what, what shots there, Corey? What shots? Unbelievable shots. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, who would you rather play between Princeton and West should we, Virginia? <laughs> should we just should we just start talking about Kim Mulkey then while we're at this? Uh, I see some comments in here. I'll address your question first, Darrell. Uh West Virginia or probably Princeton because – I mean, I, and I don't know either of those teams uh, in a great way. I can tell you that a lot of people, and it was I think it was even mentioned during the broadcast, a lot of people kind of felt like West Virginia was dealt a, a blow by even seating them as an eight. So maybe they're closer to a six or a seven in a lot of people's minds. So I would rather a school from the Ivy League <laughs> than a – I mean, I, not that the Ivy League's not dangerous. Shout out to to Yale. the uh, Yale. The Yale uh, – what are they? The I'm, Tigers? Yale Tigers. I'm sure they uh... – I'm sure that I'm sure the Yale libraries were going crazy yesterday. Yeah. So, anyways, that's another one of those fantastic SEC results from yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, as it relates to Kim Mulkey, I did. It's it's interesting. So LSU climbed out of a hole yesterday, or not a hole, but a challenge, a battle against, against Rice, and and fought through and won. But apparently, there's some Washington Post story that's about to to uh, be laid down on uh, on uh, Kim Mulkey and she went off during her press conference today which she is just so oh my goodness I just think she's so about herself I'll just leave it at that but incredible so it's going to be interesting to see what this Washington Post thing reveals <laughs> you're, you're waiting for the story to come out Corey I am I'm very, <laughs> I'm very much waiting for the story I, I will say two two things number one that was not the that was not the temperament of a coach who is completely innocent. Number one, <laughs> number, is, number two, like number two. I have never heard a coach rail a reporter before the story. <laughs> I've never heard that happen before. I've heard coaches rail reporters after the story comes out. I have never heard a coach preempt a story coming out and say, if your story is wrong, I will sue you. <laughs> What, I will see you for defamation if your story's wrong. Here's what we're going to do at the end of this show before we log off. I, we will end it with uh, I'll share my uh, I'll share the video. If anybody missed it, it was I uploaded on Twitter is where I saw it. But uh, um, Bryce Kuhn, who I believe is a uh, reporter for CBS Sports and 247 Sports, um, he uploaded this video of Kim Mulkey talking about the uh, Washington Post article. I'm sure people will be fascinated by it. So anyways. Uh, anything else, Darrell, before I let you slide? Oh, no. Thanks for having me on. Just hit the like button, everybody. I mean, we should all encourage the like button. I mean, how much did Iowa win by? We should have at least that many likes. We did it, sir. Thank you, Darrell. Absolutely. Uh, the Hawkeyes winning their first round game in the NCAA tournament in Carver, 91 65 over the 16th seeded Holy Cross. What are they again? Crusaders. Crusaders. The Crusaders. So Iowa moves on to the round of 32, where they will face either Princeton or West Virginia. I believe that game is uh, underway, I think, uh, in Carver. So we'll keep Princeton is keep up. Our, five, score update yeah. for us, Scott. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, it's 23 to 18 Princeton with three minutes to go in the second quarter. So a okay. very riveting <laughs> non offensive oh, game. That's about what I expected with two defensive minded teams. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will be interesting to see if Princeton can hang on there. A lot of time to go. RTI Threads player of the game today, Kate Martin. Really impressive numbers. 14 rebounds, 15 points. She was good. She was solid from three. 
Um, for the day, Kate Martin had uh, two threes, two of five, five of seven from the free throw line, had uh, three offensive rebounds um, on the day, just two turnovers for the senior who was uh, had the highest plus minus of anybody in the court, plus 24. It actually tied Caitlin Clark, plus 24 for Kate Martin and Caitlin Clark each. All right, uh, phone line is open. We're going to get to a couple of comments here in a second, but if you want to call in to the show, the StreamYard uh, link is in the description, and you can also call the phone line, 515-635-1601, 515-635-1601. And a couple of, uh, couple of comments here. So Kyle, this is a different Kyle. Kyle in the chat says, People got to be careful with the face and forearms. That's the point. I get that. I understand that. I'm all about safety, but some things are hard to avoid is all I'm saying. That, uh, that logic that you use for the technical foul, I think is the logic that referees more appropriately apply to those headshots because they're trying to prevent them in the future. That's even if the foul is not egregious, sometimes calling something like that can make people more cautious and try and it's the same thing with the targeting rule, right? In football, like you're trying to a lot of problems with the targeting rule. There is a lot of problems, but you're trying to, the, the, the idea of it is you're trying to coax people away from those kinds of hits. Sure. So I, I can tell you one of the big issues I have with the elbow rules and the cylinder rule, right? The cylinder rule is uh, That's a weird saw, one. even earlier this season, we've seen situations uh, specifically in the men's game where you have a player who's got the ball and is clearing out and hence has the elbows out. And by the way, being a Mavs fan, I watched Dirk Nowitzki do this every single game with the ball as he's posting up his guy ready to, to uh, create space and, and hit a fadeaway. But you see guys do this all over the court. And what's crazy is the rule gives a player a cylinder of space, but that cylinder of space, the margin for – interpretation as to where that ends is so thin Kyle that you either have oftentimes you either have a foul on the defense or you have a flagrant foul on the offense yeah. like there is no it's either one or the other and I don't like that like you can't convince me that it should either be a foul on the other team or a flagrant against you because you happen to extend a half an inch further I just think there's got to be a better way of protecting people but man I have the same type of, of thought for targeting in, in football and john says kyle do you still have uh, remember my comment from a month back about remodeling the arena building a new one yeah i mean i don't i think the the old capital mall rendering was interesting but like yeah that, this is a this is a problem that we all know that they have they're gonna they're gonna have to i mean we keep saying they have to do something about it i don't know that they do after all these years but i would like them to do something about it well Mansky, thank you for the super chat <laughs> Given an admiration. <laughs> That'll pay for your Washington Post subscription, Corey. <laughs> is it is it subscriber only? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I imagine some of the big stories like that are not. Yeah. But I know they have they have some stuff. Uh they would get a lot of new subscribers if they made that. They also make a lot of people upset if they made yeah. that subscriber only. Thank you, Lemansky. Appreciate well, the super. Somebody answer. would somebody would screenshot it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, somebody screenshot. Bjork. Says, uh, donated $75 to your show today. Thank you, Bjork. Not seen that, but I appreciate that. Uh, he says that's 25 for each three-point basket by Gabby Marshall. Our three-point shots early in the game were huge. We shook off the rust. Ten days is a long layover. And I would agree with that. I, that was my most encouraging point um, for this game early. To be able to see, with Caitlin Clark struggling, people like Gabby Marshall hitting threes early in spite of the two weeks off. I think that's a great sign. Yeah. Because if you're going to revert back to what you were in January, February, or even back into November, December for, as a shooter, you would think maybe that would happen coming off a long rest. But it didn't happen with Gabby Marshall, and that's positive moving forward because this team is darn near impossible to beat if everybody's hitting their threes around Caitlin Clark. I mean, that's kind of stating the obvious. Like any team's hard to beat when you're making threes, but with as much attention as Caitlin Clark generates, her ability to step out and make outside shots okay, game plan changes, we're going to force her to drive. But as long as people are making threes in the corners, they're exactly. almost impossible to beat. Yeah, there's there's two shots that they get from those from the physical defense and then the help side doubles for Caitlin and it's kicks to the corner or she gets around the first defender and gets someone in the lane for a layup. Like as long as those two shots are going down or they're still available, they'll be they'll be okay. Showtime. Uh 
So as I give Corey credit for not being a homer, trying to be a new, be a neutral, neutral for the sake of conversation. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Amanda, Kyle, do you know Ben Zobrist? I have to know. I won't say I know him, but I know um, I've, I've been in contact with him a few times. I used to take baseball lessons from him as a kid uh, because his the pastor of my church um, was the dad of his now ex-wife. So he used to give um, he used to give baseball instruction through our church. So I I met him a few times through that. Very, very cool guy and a very good speaker as well, by the way. He's uh, a very, very cool guy to listen to. Couple notes on this game, folks, as we continue to talk about it for at least the next five to ten minutes. If you want to call in, the numbers up on the screen. Iowa was down ten to eleven at the first media timeout. They bring in a very interesting lineup, which featured Taylor McCabe, Kylie Fearbach, Addison O'Grady, Gabby Marshall, and Kate Martin, and they go on an eight nothing run. I actually tweeted out at that point, Kyle. I said maybe you stick with this lineup for a while, and that's not what Lisa Bluter did. She puts Caitlin Clark back in the game for Gabby Marshall now. Caitlin Clark for the game was plus 24. So I'm in no way trying to convince people that Clark should be riding the bench when they're struggling. But as it relates to riding that lineup, I thought at the time it may have been a good idea to keep her on the bench because those five were rolling. What do you know? They took Gabby Marshall off the bench. Holy Cross goes on a 7 nothing run. And that's what created the deficit at the end of the first quarter. Just a note, I know hindsight's 20-20, but I did say that when it happened that maybe you keep that that lineup on the court. What do you think of the back and forth in that first quarter? Yeah, yeah, that, you're, it was it was nice to see them go on that run. I was surprised that they took Gabby out there, but um, I mean, really, at the end of the day, I wasn't super bothered with whatever lineup uh, Lisa wanted to put out there. Um, I just I just wanted to see people get run, especially when when Hannah went out. It was, it was I think honestly, I think it could be a positive thing later on as long as Hannah comes back and is Hannah um, getting to see. AJ Ediger out there a little bit here and there, and especially Addison O'Grady got along. How, how many minutes did Addy have today? Addy finished the game with 14 minutes, seven oh, and nine cool. shooting. So not okay. That wasn't that wasn't super. So AJ Ediger, how many minutes? Uh, AJ had uh, almost 13. Okay, well there you go. That's yeah, that's some good run for both of them. Um, interesting thing about that Princeton West Virginia game, 26, 24 at halftime, the Iowa game. Let's see here. The Iowa game had 162 possessions. And so far we've only got, let's see if I can go to team stats here, 164 possessions. And so far this in the first half, this Princeton West Virginia game has 54 shots plus so 60 64 possessions in the first half so it's playing like 30 40% slower than the Iowa game did so it's kind of a little bit of a meat grinder as the score would suggest but I'm I'm curious how that plays out when they play the winner of that game because obviously especially if Hannah's back in the game they're going to try and run a lot obviously but that's I that's that's a very very slow basketball game Absolutely. Let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse Colin. Oh, no, Tony just Tony was here for a second and now he's gone. So, um, Tony, if you're back, uh, we'll be happy to put your your face up on the screen. Um, and uh, while we're waiting for our next caller, again, 515-635-1601, 515-635-1601. Again, want to thank Iowa Smokehouse for sponsoring not only the call-in line, but the show as a whole. Proud supporters of Iowa women's basketball and from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Extend your thanks and uh, do a favor to your stomach and get some great tasting, great quality snacks from a local company down in Albia, Iowa. And they can have it shipped right to your doorstep with the code Hawkeyes. You get 15% off. And if you spend $50 on an order, you'll get free shipping. Again, that's the code Hawkeyes at iowasmokehouse.com for 15% off your total order. Tasting is believing. And RTI Threads. Appreciate RTI Threads supporting not only this show, but Iowa baseball as Brody Brecht and the Hawks continue. Well, they're really beginning now their Big Ten journey. Check out the Iowa baseball swarm gear over at iowabaseballswarm.com in a partnership with RTI Threads. Check it all out, iowabaseballswarm.com, and check out all the player apparel for a bunch of Hawkeye football players, a bunch of small town athletes at Iowa, or excuse me, at rtithreads.com. That's www.rtithreads.com. 
All right. A um, couple more things here in the chat. We've got uh, Tipsy. Thank you for uh, reminding us of this. Yes, you can buy Iowa Smokehouse in your local Hy-Vee drugstore, but you won't get that 15% off discord, discount or the free shipping. So get free shipping. You don't have to go out of your house and you'll get the discount and you'll be directly supporting the cause here. Yes, Swarm Beer and Vodka available too. Good to hear that hy vs are taking care of people down there in the um, Iowa City area. Michael. Why extend your elbow at all while you're driving the lane, reckless and intentional? <laughs> Michael, please don't make me don't. Please. If you want to trigger Corey, put that comment in again. Just put I, different variations of that comment in for the rest of the show. I'm just going to watch. I'm just going to watch. Have you ever seen a player try to change direction? This is like the Cooper DeGene thing yeah. where Cooper's running and moving his arms. Ah, that's a, ah, it's a, it's a legal signal. Look at his arm. Like you ever seen a player, she's moving left and she's trying to come back over and Clark is right here in her grill. You're You have to raise your arms over to try to swim create, through her. Create momentum. Yeah. That's have you ever, I mean, I'm not going to even say, but <laughs> it's just, come on. I mean, you can say you can ask him. You can ask him if he's ever run before. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But physics, man, physics. Going to basketball court, physics. Um, Jared says, "Did you see them chanting Proctor sucks on the McAfee show?" I did not watch the McAfee show. Bravo, Iowa fans. And spot, yes, it was not a fair catch. Thank you for that. Let's go to our next Iowa Smokehouse caller. Corey's here. And another one, different Corey. Corey, welcome. How are we doing, Corey? That was fast, guys. Uh, I was not going to get on here. My wife's going to yell at me. We're supposed to go to dinner, come down here, freak out. Oh, you're on there again, but I'm, <laughs> I'm triggered. Um, okay. We've taken, in the comments section, we've taken an, uh, uh, an informal poll. And so far, it's trending that it's 50.0001%. Uh, that that was a reckless elbow <laughs> in our informal poll. Uh, oh. No, sci scientific is the word. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, again, go back to the cylinder rule. It's the same principle. I know the rule is not the same, but the principle of if you're going like this in your own cylinder, it's not, and then you cannot call that a flagrant foul because you have a right to movement. That's a fact. Yeah, no, it 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 was not a common uh, movement. the 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 elbow was higher than I'm used to seeing it in a natural uh, flow of of the game, but it just could be her own personal quirk. Um, but boy, that replay didn't look good. I know it's slow motion, and, it, and it's it's. But the the replay that looked bad was the one behind her. And you can't really see depth. I think if you look at the one from the baseline, it's very clear. In my opinion, it's very clear that the elbow was not intentional. And I, I'm not again. I, I have no reason. I don't even know this girl who did this. I don't even. I don't have any loyalty to Holy Cross or to. Is it Bron? How do you pronounce her first name? Bronog. Brona. It's a weird first Bron, name. Bron maybe. I don't, know. I, I don't know, Corey, but you're more than welcome to participate in our ongoing poll that we have in your comment section. Unfor unfortunately, though, on this channel, he his his voice gets ten votes in that poll. It'll only get one, so I don't think he wants to participate. <laughs> like, like old Mother Russia, one of their polls. Yeah. So, um, I just a couple comments. Um, I think that. It's possible Caitlin's dad said, uh, quiet up, uh, not just stop, but like, shut up. Um, no, that's what I thought he said, too. Yeah. And um, I'll just say this, Caitlin, um, it, it, I think it can affect her when she gets that frustrated. She's got to know that these teams are going to be dogging her and she's got to play the role of the decoy and she's got to suck this coverage up and, and utilize it and expect it because they're going to, they're going to do this, especially if she shows visible frustration, these teams are going to scout this and they're going to see oh, yeah. it. 
You, like even even five ten years ago, when the Indiana Pacers used to have Lance Stevenson on the roster, he spent the entire game trying to bait LeBron James into technical fouls. That was his job. His job was to be physical with him, get in his head, push him around a little bit, and see if he could bait him into doing something stupid. And he did once or twice, but that's they, the pe- teams have people on the roster that they can assign this role to. Yeah, and um, second observation. I mean, it's obvious, but to get those three bigs in there. I mean, even even Sharon at the end and get some get them in the flow, get some confidence. Um, I think that's going to be huge for them moving forward as we progress. And we get if we get to LSU and then we get into whether it's UCLA or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, it's. I, I just see. And the other thing I'm concerned with and that, Hannah was obviously off today, but. You know, that that shot fake and that crossover or that duck under move that she was using in, in a couple of previous games, I didn't see that tonight. I mean, it was a short um, sampling, but she's got to get – they've got to go to that shot fake or these guys are going to get blocked down low with these six, seven bigs they're going to be coming up against. So, um, but anyway, uh, good to see – uh, the bigs getting getting in there, and and secondly is uh, Gabby was drilling everything. Uh, if she was taken, if she was set on her shots, but she's she's not set. But you noticed, Caitlin couldn't get it right in her in her sweet spot because of this defense. You've got to give credit to Holy Cross throwing their timing off and this team has got to get used to and adjust to their timing is not going to be perfect all the time. When they get up against these tougher defenses, um, their timing is going to get thrown off and they've got to, got to adjust to it. And I think they did that later in the second half. They made those adjustments. They didn't, they couldn't make that pass in the flow. They had to come to a jump, jump stop and then, make an adjustment and then pass. So, but uh, anyway, it was it, the way the game started, I got sick to my stomach for a minute and I thought, Oh, Uh-oh. How, how long is the rust going to take to shake off? Yeah. But uh, it was good to see him get rocking. And um, I just wanted to see Caitlin blow it wide open though, so she can get her frustration out. And that didn't happen. Hopefully that can happen Monday night. Yeah, with a lot of those like lower seated teams too, by the way, on those rotations, the thing I was most impressed with was usually those teams that come in and they're underdogs and they're playing really hard. When they force the adjustment on the passes, those first closeouts they're really good at. And then the second swing, which Iowa does really well, they usually have someone on the wing and then they have someone in the corner. That second swing is usually wide open against those 16 seeds. Sydney Falter had one that I remember that she made and then one that she missed. And Kate Martin had two in the corner where they, they made that second rotation and Holy Cross was still there to contest. That was, that, that really impressed me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just tonight. The only thing that, that was a little bit bothersome was our passing, you know, we really didn't get it the pass to the shooter on the three in the sweet spot. And they had to make a couple of steps and get and readjust. And then our shots were off because, you know, we couldn't just stay set and catch the ball and shoot it. Um, you know, I think that's a little bit rust, maybe. But, uh, yeah, needless to say, um, I think Corey Brada has ended any opportunity in the future for him to do any type of even intramural refereeing <laughs> with, with this reckless elbow. Uh, I mean, I'm concerned that if he was an MMA referee, he may not stop the fight. He may <laughs> this is not bad. Hey, just for the record, I did do some officiating at, uh, I think it was like, I'm trying to think when that was. Probably eight years ago, I did some officiating for like intramural stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm serious. I'm 100% serious. I can go get my, I think I still have my officiating stuff on. I'm serious. You need to, you need to wear that to a show sometime. <laughs> I will. 
I will. Don't worry. I will. If they, if they get if they get screwed like they did against Minnesota, I need to see you in that again. Okay. And right. and I I I joined late. Where's Kashin? She's just not available today. She had an emergency come up. Oh. So. Well, hope everything's well with her. We sure miss her um her input. So. Yep. Corey, but, thank you for the call, sir. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Absolutely. Appreciate Corey being here. Hopefully his wife uh, doesn't get on him too hard. Uh, appreciate uh, everybody being here. And YT, uh, YouTube viewer 127, love the class from Homie. I can't homie I can't cross. stop seeing Homie Cross. But <laughs> it's, it's meant to be an L, but it's an M. I love the class from uh, Holy Cross late in the game, getting their depth uh, players experience. when it's clear they couldn't win. That'll pay off. Down the road, Lemansky. Kyle, is Corey out of his podcast cylinder? Second, can you double check Corey and throw him off of his own podcast? No, I cannot. Well, I, technically, I probably could, right? <laughs> yeah. I could try. I just wouldn't be on it. once, Kyle. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, and uh, showtime. Ridiculous comment. Anyway, <laughs> we'll go back to uh, let's go back to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. We've got Tony on the hold on our Iowa Smokehouse line. Tony. I swear you've actually done a show with that referee shirt. Did I do one? You had the final. You did. I don't remember what one it was. I'm pretty but... sure you did. Might have been a while back. I think I did. That's actually a good point. I think I did do that at one point. You had a zebra shirt as the you know basketball. No, it, was an, it was an actual official shirt. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, am I, I just is are you going to give me any vote of confidence on the whole? She was. It was a swim move. <laughs> I was I was in and out watching most of the game. We had some car troubles, so I just got back home. So, well, just for the record, I'll make very clear. I'll say one more thing, and I'll leave it alone. I do not advocate the fact, the idea that it was not a foul. It was a foul, but I'm just saying I believe it was an unintentional, and I think an unintentional swim move off the ball should not be called. Certainly not intentional, and I don't even know that it should be called flagrant. But I mean, oh, my- the, tra- the translation for the chat is Corey wants a bar fight on the court. How how long did the review take? Not real long. That was a minute. No, they basically went to yeah, they basically went to and I kind of thought it was probably going to be called a flagrant. That, when they said uh, intentional, that's what really got me. So. Now I think I've noticed, and I think this is with the women's game, but not the men's game. I rarely have seen it. They do where they go to the mic and say what it is, like the NBA does. I right. wish that's explanation something. of the call. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They don't do that <laughs> in college. At least not yet. I do like that in the NBA. Yeah. Well, I thought they do sometimes in women's games. I thought I've seen it. Okay. Maybe they will. I, they, they did. They did in the, you know, when I remember they actually, it was just very recently was that LSU South Carolina game. When the ejections happened, they went over, the referee went over the microphone to the arena. Oh. And they did do that today. They went over the microphone, but all they said was an intentional foul. They didn't explain gotcha. why it was okay. Yeah. Okay. So they used the microphone, just not to the full extent they could. Exactly. Yep. Just like um, they used replay, just not to the full extent they could. Well, do you want a three-hour game? <laughs> no, I'm just – well, no, I'm saying I'm saying the NBA, whether you like it or not, they have this challenge system. Yes. Yes. And I do like the idea of – the challenge system. I grew up watching tennis, and when they mm-hmm. when they started the challenge system in tennis, I thought it really helped the game. I don't think it – now, tennis is a different sport. I understand you're not trying to slow down basketball, but anyways. If they if they did it, I would be in favor of a challenge-type system instead of – you know, these kids, I swear, some of them are idiots. And what I mean by that is you know, you're watching – I mean, I'm, I'm watching Wall to Wall Turn, and they're going like this, and it's like eight minutes left in the second. It's like – don't you guys know what the rules are? Like, they're not going to review it until two. Like, they just instantaneously fall on that as a crutch. And I think it's just gotten out of control that maybe the challenge system is the answer. Because you way, only get so many, right? In the NBA? Correct. Right. Okay. And uh, I believe James is right. So that's that's really what I have an issue with is the lingo behind the call. So it's called an intentional foul. If it's gonna, we're gonna call it an intentional foul. It better be clear that it was intentional. You know what I'm Instead saying? Instead of flagger, yeah, yeah. But the, basically, the 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 same level of foul in the men's game is a flagrant one, and then they have to get they call it a disqualifying foul. 
I and so. women's hoops, that's the equivalent of a flagrant two, which is a little bit more broad, disqualifying foul. Okay. But when you say intentional foul, it gives the idea that it was an intentional the foul. rule the rule book says the intentional foul absorbs the flagrant one in the men's game. So yeah. that's yeah. it's, just it's, it's that yeah, it's just a play. stupid, it's a stupid setup, but it's the right call. I see you um stuck to your Iowa State them and picked the, them to win in the women's bracket as well, Corey. Is this just because you're an Iowa State homer? First of all, I picked them to lose in the second round of the men's, <laughs> of the men's tournament. Oh, you did? Which they're down right now. They are down four. I had them losing to Drake, but oh, okay. what are you talking I had them. You picked being... them in the women. You picked them in the women's tournament to win their first game as well. I was just giving you a hard time. They were higher. They were the higher seed. <laughs> hey, did you see Luca Garza's bracket? No. He, yeah, he had them the losing in the first round. He had the men. <laughs> He had the men losing the first. Just the, the, state. the, the yeah. entire Instagram comments on that yeah. post was, what a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your setup for March? Mine or Kyle's? Both. Either one. I'm just March Madness app, and I'm I'm going back and forth. I, mean, I cr I'm cast everything. So I don't have multiple screens, but I'm just basically monitoring games and casting what I can. I got I, – I just have the one – TV at home that I use. And then the other thing that I've been doing is I've been just starting out here to do social media for a place in the Iowa city called X golf or in Coralville, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they have golf simulators set up and then a ton of TVs around the whole place. So you can, you can play and you can also watch. So that's, if anybody's interested, that's also a fun place to go. Well, I get, I mean, do you want me to flip the camera? This guy's <laughs> asking me to. I oxy money wants to see that's Corey in the chat. He wants that's to see your, your setup so th this is your garage or is this your man yes cave? this is my garage man cave or whatever wow look at that there we go wow multiple you got four screens working down there yeah yeah but with youtube they only limit you to three so you've got to use like an app or the march <laughs> madness app you can only use three streams at once and then they so there's workarounds and stuff or i, I actually have a uh, rabbit ears or over the air antenna so i mean one of them is going to be on cbs so i can just leave that you're ready to go, man. Well, this is what <laughs> I you, live. How do you get like my 600 pound life on another screen then? If you can't, <laughs> no, I'm serious. If you've got all of them tied up on the four Turner networks for March Madness, how do you get your TLCs and your MTVs and your women's well, entertainment I mean, on the other TV? I I don't. But what I what I what I usually do is for the first two days, one of them will have the quad box, and then whatever game's closest to ending, I'll have on a big screen so i'm seeing the closer end. okay so what did you get do you have total numbers for uh, both the men's and women's challenge oh uh, well, i can give people an update on that is yeah. that what you're looking for yeah either way or no yeah and we might as well do that uh kyle what'd you have for lunch today <laughs> uh, uh, iowa state iowa state took the lead if you want to fill if you want filler yeah, and uh yeah. West Virginia is up 32-29 with 6.50 to go. Looks like they just scored a layup, so now it's 29-34. And I believe Carolina is up at half, 40-31. to 31. All right, so um, my bad for not getting this uh, promoted earlier. I should have promoted it Sunday, and it was right after the selection show, so I didn't have the bracket group ready to go. So if we had gotten more – Maybe another day of promotion in. Maybe we could have gotten a few more people competing in this bracket. They can, people yeah. can can pe people can still enter, right? As long as you had a bracket that was created before. I no? think ESPN locks it. Yeah. Oh, okay. One of the one of the maybe CBS doesn't, but as long as your bracket's created, I think on CBS you can keep joining groups. Well. But you have to have a bracket done before the deadline. You can't create a new like it. You know what I mean? It has to be a bracket yeah, that was already completed. Problem. Kyle, the I, problem, I know what you're going to, Corey. So go the ahead. problem with that is then you have somebody who makes 30 brackets and then they find their best bracket and they throw it in. No. <laughs> we we limited one per user mm -hmm. and you had to have your bracket submitted because last people year people can submit whatever bracket they want. It just can't beat Corey's bracket because otherwise he gets salty. <laughs> well, I'd love to know if the if any of the top three people won last year are actually watching this show right now. And I hope they are, sure. but I know at least one of those three people that won last year. They were adding their bracket later in the process. I believe it was it, just like you're saying, Kyle, because they were not anywhere near the top. And then like last day, all of a sudden, this new name popped up there. And that was my 
my fault for not making sure that was that, that just doesn't make sense to me to allow well, they wanted that they later. wanted that free smokehouse let me tell you oh, yeah. oh, hundred dollar smokehouse gift card is pretty <laughs> tony would cheat for iowa smokehouse <laughs> no i'm i'm a bracket of integrity person i do one that's it one well that's i forget you you've watched every college basketball game of the year you don't need to cheat men's yes women's no <laughs> Okay, so men's my bracket's here's, not great either. So go ahead. Here's the men's challenge update for everybody. So right now, our from the Hawkeye of the Storm men's challenge. We got 79 people in this group, and uh, right now, congratulations to it looks like Leonard Shetler, who uh, is in the 99.5 percentile, according to ESPN. He's in first place, and got 25 uh, games right so far. Yeah. Yeah. Really impressive stuff from him. So a lot of a lot of games left, a lot of points left still to be had. So we'll monitor that. And there then, you go. Oh, you just scrolled past my losing bracket. Yeah, come on. Oh, let's let's give Tony's losing. There it is. There Not you bad. Go. You're you're at three you're games behind. It's uh yeah. it's it's really more important if you get a, a good final four. Like anybody yes. that has their champion that's that's wrong already, those people are gonna. End when up. the point looking like you know when he scrolled down the points available. Some of those people don't have that many points available left. They're high up, but they don't have, yeah. you know, when you, the max. Sort, sorry, yeah, max, so, the yes. The, the real way to sort it at this stage is to sort it by the max. Why isn't it? Well, by the max. You see yeah, that, yeah. That's the most you could get. Like some of those people will have like 230 points, but if they pick Kansas, they have no, like, go. there was somebody that picked Kansas down a little lower. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to be way lower now. because you have Oh, you've sorted by the max, max now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. the true way to support wow. to oh, sort Tony, where, oh, you're right there. Okay. Yeah. Tony. Yeah, I'm in I'm in the top six, Tony. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean you're sitting good because you're sitting good because you got Carolina winning and not many people yeah. have it. And you have a high amount of max points left. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very, very true. And I I, I mean I don't I don't just random I know some people just randomly make their picks every year, but I felt pretty good about my final four. I got three big East teams in my final four. Now, if you're talking about the women's bracket. As uh, Kyle mentioned earlier, quite the Opposite. quite the challenge because we've got Kashina Alexander at the very top, mm -hmm. although she has missed now. Um, no, no, hold on a second. Wow, yeah, she's so there's actually a number of people who've who have your just screen won. froze on us. I'm not seeing. Maybe it's just yeah, me. We're but, still seeing where, where uh, the men's bracket. Yeah. Well, why you, you must be on a different screen. That we're not sharing. <laughs> there you go. No. I thought you clicked it, but no, I know she was doing quite well, and I think she had South Carolina. I mean, in the women's, it was either South Carolina or Iowa. That those are the only two that people picked to win it all. Yeah, everybody it, was. Yeah, it was pretty. Numbers. There was no. I, it's not even. No, I said. I said this to Corey when I made my pick. I picked UConn in the men's bracket, not even because I was like, "Oh, UConn's going to win," but I think UConn is like you have to pick these champions based on the safest teams that aren't going to go down early. Cause if they, if your champion, again, if your champion goes down early, your point total is going to be horrible. So you, you can pick a four or five or six seed to, to win it all. If you want to, that's fine. But if they go down in the first, second, third round, you're cooked. Like, so Kyle, Kyle, are, are, are you Kyle? I want to know, are you uh, insulting me for, Having picked Oakland to beat Kentucky and picking Duquesne, no, no, but you you're not picking Oakland to win the national championship. Of course not. I've, if you if you're picking if you're picking ten seeds to go to the final four, then yes, that's that's a huge dice roll. If you're picking ten seeds to win a game or two, that's the the first two games are worth ten points and twenty points for the for the second round. The final four games are worth like a hundred points each. Yeah, no. you've got to keep that final four intact for as long as possible. And mine's the most boring. My men's final four is probably the most boring one ever. It's UConn, Arizona, Purdue, and Houston. <laughs> oh. I, one two seed. Yeah. Oh, you have a two. Wait, who's the two it's seed? Arizona. Arizona. Oh, wait, who's the one in that bracket? North Carolina. North Carolina. Oh, so you've got so I've got North Carolina win the whole thing, and you've got them out earlier. Okay. It just like it, I've I've always like Arizona has been my second favorite men's team ever since loot left there and you know uh the thing is is they have it set up almost perfectly they play salt lake city la and then the final four is in phoenix like it couldn't have set up any more perfectly for them to get their rabid fan base to all these games like carolina is going to have to play them in la if carolina plays arizona that game is going to be in la and i would bet that's a very partial 
towards Arizona crowd. Less travel as well. Yes. Lemansky says uh, he wants you to be his IT troubleshooter. Tommy. I could do that. <laughs> I think he needs to be your IT troubleshooter, Corey. <laughs> Are you in a position, Tony, to move to Wisconsin? Is he in Wisconsin? Is that where he is? Yes, Lemansky's okay. in Wisconsin. I mean, I can. Most IT stuff's done remotely nowadays. Okay, I'll so. I'll make sure Lemansky reaches out to you after the game or after the show. <laughs> Not a problem. Not Anything a problem. else, Tony? Uh, yeah. Did you see the game times announced for Monday? I don't know if you covered that or not. I've been in and out. Uh, I heard they announced it during the game. It was eight o'clock, right? Yeah. Seven. I think it was well, eight, eight, eight Eastern. Eight yeah. Eight Eastern. Eastern, seven central. Yep. Yeah. I'm assuming then, the, yeah, ESPN, right? Yes. Regular ESPN. That's what she said. Yeah. Yep. So by the okay. way, do you like, do you like Beth Moens, Tony? It gives me like old 2000 Kirk football vibes at 11 a.m. What did I say? What did I say, Corey? What did I say? <laughs> you actually like Beth Moens. I do. I like Beth Moens. That's I don't totally mind her. I'm just, saying, I'm just saying it reminds me of 11 a.m. kickoffs on It does. ESPN. It reminds me of the, the old yeah. – you remember the old NCAA oh, football yeah. intro? The yeah. old intro? Yep. The 11 o'clock kicks against like Pitt or whoever yeah. they used to play back in the early 2010s. Yep. That's that's what she reminds me of. Yeah, I'm not saying she's bad. I'm not saying she's good. I'm not, you know, neither. I'm kind of. I, I like her it. better than some of the others. There, I, but I I'm just, I'm just that. telling you this right now. She made. I, I don't mind her for women's basketball games, but she made a comment about. Did you anybody catch the comment she made about Kate Martin? She said something about how there were some people wondering why she came back for this season, and I'm like, what are you talking about? Who wondered that? that? He did say something like that about why Kate Martin returned. Like people were wondering why she returned. I'm like, nobody wondered why she returned. <laughs> Bye, Tony. <laughs> Anyways, I just thought that was funny, and it it does. It makes me. It, it brings me back to the days of her yelling out, "Darrell Johnson, Coolianus." You know, I, <laughs> I can't deal with that. That's what I I can't get out of my my mind. Or, Cavanti oh. Martin Manley, you know. Oh, Anyways, we won't get into that, but uh, I guess we already did. John, men's basketball question: Who at this moment is on your short list for Fran's replacement if and when it returns? Well, I mean, Darian DeVries would be, <laughs> you know, wish list wise, right at the top. I think you have to put him at the top. Um, I don't know who the li- I don't think Matt Gatens has been in the assistant coaching world long enough yet for me to be comfortable with that type of a hire. I don't know that I'd be comfortable with Courtney Eldridge. He's kind of in the same position. Um, so yeah, Darian DeVries would be the one guy. Chris Collins is a guy that I've tossed his name around. Would he have any interest in coming to Iowa from Northwestern? I have no idea. That team's still playing the tournament. Yeah. Um, so they may make it to sweet 16 and, and uh, help the big 10 out. So um, that's what I would say to that question. Good question though, John appreciate the, uh, the interaction again, Iowa defeating Holy Cross 91 65 behind a big day from Kate Martin and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Kate, our RTI threads player of the game with 15 point 15 points, 14 rebounds and the Hawkeyes taking care of business. Uh, and they'll advance to the second round where they'll play either West Virginia or Princeton Monday at 7 PM central time on ESPN. And in case anybody was wondering that game is now third quarter 37 29 midway through the third quarter. West Virginia is now up though, Kyle. Yeah. And as it relates to the game flow, there was a time where Princeton was up 21 23 to 14. And since then, West Virginia has outscored them 23 to 6. So, uh, we'll <laughs> in about in about 12 minutes of playtime. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> T Hawkeye, the announcers today were not good. Thank you for the super chat, T Hawkeye. I, I, yeah, I mean, I I didn't, I don't mind Beth Mullins on women's basketball games. Um, and I want to make clear, it's got nothing to do with her being a woman. I actually, you know, who I really like, Kyle, who's the gal for uh, Big Ten Network, Lisa Byington. I actually really like Lisa Byington. It's just all about the voice, and there's some. Like I, I have a hard time. You know who I have a hard time with, and he's on March Madness calls over for Turner. I have a hard time with Robbie Hummel. Like I know a lot of people really like him, 
He annoys the living daylights out of me. You say that to me about once every two weeks, by the way, during basketball <laughs> season. <laughs> Robbie Hummel annoys me. Robbie daylight. Hummel annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> he says the same things over and over again. And anyways, we're, they're all critics, right? We're all critics. So, what uh, were you? Did you catch any of the? I know this is looking ahead a little bit. Did you catch uh, the Colorado Drake game or the Kansas State Portland game? Do you catch any of those games? I did watch part of uh, Colorado Drake. Yes. What, how did they? Drake how had, did they look? Well, Drake had an early lead, and then Colorado. I just thought exerted their will on both ends down the stretch. Just a more physical team, more athletic team. Um, and I know they've kind of tailed off as the seasons went on, but I still think their their athleticism. They got Quay Miller back. They've got uh, Vonley back. They've got Sherrod back. They're a they're a tough team, and they know Iowa. So I don't know. I don't know who I'd rather. I think either way that game's going to be. I mean, I think Iowa's going to. I think they'll win whoever they play there. But I would not be shocked if they don't. If, if those are yeah. those are a couple teams that provide some matchup issues. I think for Iowa. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. All right, folks. Again, Iowa, West Virginia, or Princeton over on ESPN Monday, seven p.m. Central Time, and Kashina Alexander will be with me following the game to recap what we hope to be a Sweet 16 clinching win in Carver Hawkeye Arena. Kyle, thank you for being here as always. And if people want to support this show, please do so by means of PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. Those links are in our description of the video. Also, support our sponsors. They're the ones that make this all happening happen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button on your way out. Have a good weekend watching March Madness, folks, and we will talk to you soon.